Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. I'm Scott. We're doing Five Year Battle Stephen King, the years 2009 through 2013. Uh, this would actually be probably the, the shortest collection of King for me to go through, except there are a couple of publications that generally most people might not add, but since they were published in that time frame and they are not part of another collection, I'm going to go ahead and add them. I will also add that I am not including the Kindle single guns on here. It is not, as far as I know, collected in any other form, but because it is only a short essay, I don't feel comfortable placing it within this. I assume at some point that it'll probably be added to some collection, but I feel comfortable not adding it here. I also didn't add the uh, Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon pop-up book because although it's taken from a King book, the pop-up book itself is not produced by King. So that's why I never included that. Although many people might go, I didn't even know that was a book. Watch yourself, Ron. All right, so we're going to start with a big one, Under the Dome. This is one of, what, th three books King has written that have gone over a 1,000 pages, including it in the uncut version of The Stand. This one tends to feel more like it's 1,000 pages than those books. I don't think it's a bad book, but I think for the story that it has, it's just... It, it could use some editing, I think. There are some great characters in there that I really like. It also has Big Jim, a town select man, and at this point in time... I'm kind of tired of King's Town Selectmen because uh, they're always bad people and it's become a trope now. If there's a Town Selectman in a King story, oh, well, that's going to be a bad person. And I'm thinking also of uh, Storm of the Century in which uh, the Town Selectman was also a pretty horrible person or the head Town Selectman. Another one where aliens come into play. Aliens. Stephen King has been really hit or miss with aliens. This is probably his best uh, aliens novel. But I, I, I it's kind of damning of a faint praise since right now the other ones that I can think of are The Tommyknockers and Dreamcatcher. Two books that are widely considered uh, some of his worst work. If you have time, you can read that or clobber somebody you don't like with it because it really it feels heavier than it or the stand. Full Dark, No Stars. As with Different Seasons and Four Past Midnight, this is another collection of four novellas. Uh, these ones are even more so than Four Past Midnight, more in the horror vein. Uh, you got 1922 uh, about, well, murder and marriage. Big Driver is a uh, about uh, a writer who is uh, attacked by somebody. She's a woman, so of course, in a King story, she's going to be abused in some way. Uh, Fair Extension, which I'll be honest, I was trying to think before I started this what Fair Extension was about. And then I, I read the little blurb. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Kind of a, a deal with the devil thing. It, it is a, a good story. It's the shortest than the novellas in here. And I don't think I should necessarily hold it against it that I didn't think what the story was right away. It just didn't come out 
but as soon as I read it, it's like, oh yeah, I like that one. I maybe I liked it best of the four. One because it's short, and two is just an easy read. There is also a good marriage about a woman who believes that her husband is a serial killer. I gotta be honest. I I like all of these novellas. Perhaps the one I like least is 1922, but I I definitely like the three other ones quite a bit. If I were ranking the uh, novella collections, I mean, no doubt, Different Seasons is number one. But I don't know how I would rank this one of Four Past Midnight, which is strange because I generally like all four of these novellas. And there are two novellas in Four Past Midnight that I, I don't really care for too much. But there are also two, The Langoliers and The Library Policeman, that I really like. And The Sundog, I definitely didn't like. And I'm completely blanking on the other one. So I don't know what that tells you. Oh, yeah. And the other one was Secret Window, Secret Car, which was okay. But I really like The Library Policeman. So I don't know. But... I don't have to compare those now. Maybe at some other point I will compare them. But for now, I'm going to rank this below under the dome. 11-22-63. The time travel story, which you, know, you could probably guess from here. Man goes back in time to try to stop the JFK assassination. It is also... A love story. I mentioned last time with Lisi's story um, that King doesn't often write fully developed romance stories. Romance often plays a part of his stories, but seldom is it such a huge part of it as it is with this one, Lisi's story, and Wizard and Glass. There are some other ones like the relationship in, so in Insomnia, definitely. And, Bag of Bones, which I won't get into because I already griped about that, but that is. But the three novels, you know, this one, uh, Wizard of Glass and Lisey's Story are the ones that really have romance as part of the overall arch. Apparently this story at one point ended differently than it does his son, Joe Hill, who is also a uh, novelist that you should check out, uh, suggested a a different ending. I'm not sure what the original ending was. I will say that you will probably not be surprised by this ending, but I also I can't quibble with it too much because it just it makes sense. Um, even though I may have wanted a different ending. However, expertly written, as with uh. The Dead Zone in Misery, one of his better plotted books. Perhaps not as well as those, but this had a lot more to work with. So, it is currently going to be number one. Uh, the Wind Through the Keyhole is a Dark Tower book. It is one written after the main series. If you have books one through seven, this one takes place somewhere between three and four. So between the Wastelands and Wizard and Glass, I believe. Or it could, it could be after Wizard and Glass, but it, it's somewhere in there. Uh, it's, it's nice to go back to the Dark Tower series and spend time with characters that I love. But the thing about this is this is like three stories you have an outer story about you know uh our our little quartet and then an inner story involving roland's mother and then an inner story about a tale being told as an overall novel it doesn't you know hold together as well as other dark tower series it's it's nice to go to 
this and spend time with characters I love, but it's not going to rank very high, especially in comparison to the other Dark Turn novels. For now, I'm going to place it at the bottom under Full Dark, No Stars. The next book is Joyland, which is another hard... Our next book is Joyland, which is another hard case crime book. It's not particularly crime-filled. It actually is more of a coming-of-age novel in which there's a little bit of a murder mystery in it. I, I really like this. It's set in a carnival. It it was just... It, it does what King often does best is write about a time he's nostalgic for, or at least it comes across that he's nostalgic for. The, the plot overall isn't much to speak of, but it's what King does best. He just writes about a time frame and characters that I care about, and it's just wonderfully written. I believe... I'm going to put this, I like it a lot, but I think it's going to go below full dark, no stars. Okay, we're on to the next book, and my phone definitely did not run out of space, and I am not filming this on a different day. So our next book is Dr. Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining. It's a sequel to The Shining only in the fact that one of the characters in The Shining Danny Torrance appears in the novel Dr. Sleep. There are connections to The Shining, but it's not a straight sequel. Much like uh, Black House had some of the same characters as The Talisman, but if you're expecting a continuation, then you're going to be disappointed. And perhaps you may be disappointed. Anyway, one thing I will mention that I am disappointed in here is the villains in this book aren't the best. They're not particularly villainous or difficult to defeat. Danny still has The Shining a little bit. Danny is like his father, an alcoholic. It's it's a, a decent novel. It, it doesn't hold up in comparison to The Shining. But I also don't think that we should, you know compare it directly to The Shining. If I were ranking them uh, instead of battling them, I'm, this would definitely be below The Shining. So I don't know how far below or not. But in our ranking for the five-year battle, whoo, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, I actually think I am going to put this below Full Dark, No Stars. Generally, if you're going through ranking the books published, in the years 2009 through 2013, you'd be done. Except I do have some additional books that generally aren't known. And one of them is sort of a book, sort of a musical. Ghost Brothers of Darkland County, uh, it, it is written by Stephen King, but also has music and lyrics by John Mellencamp and the musical direction by T-Bone Burnett. It involves the ghost of two brothers dead in an apparent murder-suicide and their nephews living Frank and Duke who seem to be headed toward the same downward spiral. I had heard about this for years that King and Mellencamp were working on something like this, and I was looking forward to it. Uh, Mellencamp is not one of my favorite musicians, but I, I like his stuff generally. There are a couple albums of his that I am really fond of. But the story is in no way unique, and I don't think that the music is anything special. I'm glad to have this, but that's more because I'm a completionist more than anything else. So 
for now, I'm going to rank this at the bottom. The final book, which is probably even less known than The Ghost Brothers of Darkwing County, was not actually published or was not actually originally published in this time frame. It is The Dark Man, a poem written by King uh, in college in 1969. It is about Randall Flagg. It's a short poem. You can see like some of the writing on there. That's pretty much like every page. The Dark Man, the poem itself is that long. So it, it has illustrations. Glenn Chadbourne. The illustrations are very good, but the poem itself, again, is very short. It's another one that is probably for the collectors. If you do not have this in your library, you're not particularly missing much. I'm sure if you did a search, and I don't know this for sure because I haven't done it because I have the book, but if you do a search, I'm sure that you can find a copy of this poem somewhere so that you can have read it, but it's in no way a requirement. Because of the shortness of it, again, it's it's only like three pages long as a poem. The majority of it is illustrations, which again are very good, but the illustrations are not done by King. Because of that, it's going to be at the bottom. If you didn't count those two books, then this would be the shortest list of books published by King in a five-year period at six, including those two, it is eight, which is comparable to a couple other that we have gone through. And number eight, The Dark Man. At number seven, Ghost Brothers of Darkland County. Honestly, past those two, any book on here is a good to great book. Number six, The Wind Through the Keyhole, a Dark Tower book. Number five, Joyland. I'm a little bit surprised that Joyland is so far down there, but it's just generally the books. You know what? I'm actually going to, I'm going to change it because I've just, Number five, Dr. Sleep. I just, I couldn't, I, I, I enjoy Joyland so much more than Dr. Sleep that I have to do this. And I know that this is probably not an opinion that many people share. That's going to be one of the uh, issues with going to me for this is I'm going to have some opinions that are just different than yours and sometimes drastically different. And I think this will be one of them. So I have at number four, Joyland. Number three, Full Dark, No Stars. Number two, Under the Dome. A doorstop. It's so heavy. Number one, 1122-63. So that is the years 2009 through 2013. We'll see you next time.